fifty percent of NBA players do not love playing basketball. I one hundred percent agree with that statement. Pay attention to it. You you will understand why they don't play. They don't mm-hmm. love the game. There is approximately four hundred fifty players in the NBA currently. Putting that number into perspective shows how exclusive that 450 is. Numerous sources have stated that 400 million plus humans play the sport of basketball and the top 450 are playing in the National Basketball Association. That's absurd, right? So I'm to believe half of that 450 don't even love the game? They don't cherish the sport that undoubtedly changed their lives and propelled a lot of them to stardom. And this accusation isn't coming from some angry fan who's upset after a poor performance. It started with Patrick Beverly. What percentage of NBA players do you think don't love basketball? 50. How can you tell when someone doesn't love basketball? Preparation. Most teammates I know who don't love basketball are the really good ones. Do you love basketball? I think if I had a stronger word, that'd be the word. Like, I prioritize basketball at a point too much. A veteran guard who's played on plenty of teams for a decade span, and somebody who's gained a reputation for speaking his mind, to say the least. Disregarding whatever you may feel about him, this is a guy who started his career overseas in Greece and Russia. He could have called it quits at any point during that. Pat Bev truthfully doesn't have the talent a lot of guys in the NBA have, but he worked his ass off for everything he's achieved. That's the kind of individual who can spot a faker. So him saying 50% of pro ballers don't love the game is a statement I can believe. Not to mention the credibility of the guys who have confirmed his claim. DeMar DeRozan, six-time All-Star. Paul George, eight-time All-Star. A no-brainer Hall of Famer. You want credible sources? These are sources you could use for a research paper. It doesn't get more truthful than the guys who've experienced every accomplishment in the sport. Gilbert Arenas chimed in and that's a guy who went toe to toe with Kobe Bryant. And I mean he went toe to toe with the Mamba. He gave that man 60. It's a pretty extraordinary feat to outscore the Kobe Bryant. But to outscore him even though he finished the game with 45 is crazy. This guy definitely knows what he's talking about. Do you agree with Pat Bev? Because he don't love this shit. Mm-mm. He's just doing it because he wants to take care of his family. Right. Yeah. He want to do it because, hey, they writing checks. They do it. They're that, writing checks. They're writing checks, so I might as well go ahead and get it. What frustrates a guy like Patrick Beverly, he has to work day in and yeah. day out yes. for every dollar he gets. Mm-hmm. And you have a guy who just sits there, yeah. you know, just coming in, collecting the check. Or if you're in the workplace and you're like, man, if I knew the, the manager like he does and all these hours I put in and he just comes boom. in here and he gets all these promotions. Arenas' example perfectly explains the situation. Just take away the basketball element for a second. Treat professional basketball like it's any other job. Nobody has a passion to be a fry cook, but if there's a super league for fry cooks and they were handing out seven figure wages, you'd see a lot of folks dedicating their lives to the art of fry cooking. The only thing this example doesn't consider is the fact that NBA basketball isn't fry cooking. It's basketball, a sport countless will participate in at any level, disregarding any monetary gains, because it's fun, something you could genuinely consider a passion. It's not fry cooking. Not a soul is waking up on a Saturday afternoon, jolting at the opportunity to rev up the fryer. Basketball isn't a job. Organized sports in general are more akin to the arts than an occupation. So this applies to any job, whether it's fast food, corporate, blue collar, none of those compare to playing a game. If you're watching this video, there's a strong chance you love that game and we are mere spectators. How can half the dudes we're spectating not love the game? It really sounds absurd, but you look at the way some players act and go about their business, it's evident. I don't want to make this a boo, modern era is bad thing, but growing up in the social media age, these last 20 or so years have seen a surge in global superstars from the NBA, and that rise has meant mostly positives for the league. More ambassadors of the game means more opportunities to attract eyes to the game. The NBA has never been more international, and the virality and connectivity of social media is a large part of that. And when there's more people tuning into the games, live or in person, buying all the merchandise and reposting all the highlights, that wallet starts to get hefty. And after the owners pocket their share, they gotta pay those ambassadors who made their pockets hefty in the first place. 
And the thing is, those guys will get the bag. And when the rest of the league sees the paychecks Steph, LeBron, and KD are depositing, they're going to want a slice of the pie. And even after paying those superstars a quarter billion dollars, there's a whole lot of residual pie left over. Currently, there's 151 players in the NBA making $10 million or more annually. Excluding some guys on their rookie contracts, that's pretty much everybody you'll see really getting any minutes on a court. And rookie contracts are still lucrative, especially if you're taking in the lottery. Taking a guesstimate, about 80 to 85% of those 151 have 100,000 plus followers on the internet. That doesn't account for the ecstasy of playing in front of tens of thousands every other night, five-star hotel accommodations before the games, the private flights, the personal trainers, the physical therapists, the nutritionists, the chefs, and all the other things that an NBA card can get you. Oh yeah, and millions of dollars. And first and foremost, good for all of them. They deserve every penny every single penny if the nba is bringing in all this revenue then the players the coaches the front office the commentators the training staff the medical staff the arena workers hell the ball boys anyone that had a part to play in the success and growth for the nba deserves to be paid if the boss is getting billions why can't the guy who generated those billions get a percentage and if that percentage happens to be a couple hundred million the sum is still justified unless people support billionaires keeping all the cash with that said the money the fame the cars the admiration and none of that has to do with basketball now you tell me if that life doesn't sound great, no matter what the hell you do. If there was a super league for fry cooks, and they were paying like that, I'd have been busting my ass at 13 trying to perfect the craft. So if it's something as enjoyable as the game you'd play recreationally, why wouldn't you train for it? Who cares if you really love it? Now I'm not one to pocket watch because these guys aren't paying our bills regardless if they're making a million or minimum wage. But you know who is? The young guys that are going to be in their position soon enough. They see the lifestyles these pros live and they damn sure want to follow in their footsteps. Look at the draftees in recent years. Compare these guys to their predecessors. Man, these 19 to 20 year olds are wearing designer suits and shoes, Cartier shades, they have iced out watches, Cubans, shining rings and they haven't even won a chip yet. They haven't even stepped on a court and they're moving like Prime Iverson. But that's the appeal now. Gone are the days of baggy suits and rookies struggling. Struggle left the pitcher in high school, especially now with NIL endorsements. Good for them. They earned it. Athletes deserve to profit off their likeness, but that stuff trickles into other aspects. Mentalities emerge that cause a shift in the culture. And the way the NBA pipeline is structured today, kids are at a disadvantage to the kids who have access to the resources and exposure. I mean, look at how many juniors are in the league. Every single player you hear about had a pops that played in the league, and that goes for any North American sport. And the reason is the same reason a mechanic's son has a better chance of owning an auto shop over Carmelo's son. If a kid isn't going to all these camps, playing for a pro's AAU team, they won't gain the notoriety or guidance the ones fortunate do. So guess what transpires when you have a league with guys who come from that? You get opportunists over ambitionists. Is that a word? Back in the day, you wouldn't be at the college level if you didn't love the game. Prospects were the ones who played in the concrete on double rims with no nets every day until they got really good and had a growth spurt. That was passion. David Thompson played on a rim that was made out of a bicycle wheel. Larry Bird played on a farm in the middle of nowhere, Indiana. Stojakovic escaped the war zone lobby to hoop. Man, Marcus Smart grew up in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in all of Texas, watched his older brother get hospitalized for abuse, lost his other brother when he was 9 years old, someone he saw as a father figure, and there's still more I haven't mentioned. All he had was basketball. That's somebody that loves the game. 
these are the ones who breathe basketball and they would bleed for basketball and that doesn't even take into account aliens like Steph who was everything like I mentioned about some guys coming in who are opportunists but if anyone states Steph and Curry doesn't love the game of basketball they will never be taken seriously so there's still hope you don't need to have the roughest childhood to appreciate basketball it's a beautiful game how can you not feel romantic about putting a round thing in a round thing well some guys can just wake up and proficiently put a round thing in a round thing and if they have such a natural gift why not capitalize on it they know they don't have to give it their all them at half speed is enough they don't have to work as hard like the patrick beverly's of the world they can wake up come to practice 20 minutes before, get a couple shots up, and walk out the building as soon as that time limit hits. Meanwhile, a guy like Pat Bev was getting shots up 30 minutes before they arrived, and Pat will be getting them up an hour after they leave. And they can go out and give you a cool 20 points just off their talent. And that pisses off guys like Patrick Beverly. Pat has to work twice as hard for everything he gets. He has to work that hard because of his limitations. And he's still a pro despite that because of his passion. Because he loves the game. But that's the sad nature of things. Half the league is Patrick Beverly's. The other half are not. Hey, I'm not one to accuse anyone in particular. I'll leave that to the experts. The guys who play the game and the random dudes on Twitter. But there's a silver lining. The cream always rises to the top because eventually those talents subside against real skills. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And if you ever find a talent who loves basketball, you better watch out because that's an unstoppable mother. This is really an insight into the good, the bad, and the ugly of the game because you can love the game. doesn't mean the game's going to love you back. Thanks for watching.